Welcome to Drawing Conclusions. Today we're reviewing Disney's A Wrinkle in Time, adapted from the classic children's book by Madeline Leingel. The brilliant scientist Dr. Alex Murray, dad to Meg and Charles Wallace, disappeared four years earlier during one of his experiments. And most people now believe that he's either dead or that he's just simply run off and abandoned his wife and his children. But Meg tries to hold on to hope while fighting back these same dark thoughts that others have about her father. Her mother, Dr. Kate Murray, also a brilliant scientist, helps her children hold on to that light of hope and stay tightly knit together as a family through the difficulties of their father's absence. This story follows Meg and Charles Wallace and their new friend Calvin as they set out to find and rescue Dr. Murray, a quest that sends them traveling through the universe, guided by the strange and sage trio of Mrs. What's It, Mrs. Who, and Mrs. Witch. This movie feels very much like it is part of this decade's generation of Disney live-action films. The new wave of high-budget and high-profile fantastical films that kicked off with the release of Alice in Wonderland in 2010. Although the budget for Wrinkle in Time is half what that film was. The quality and enjoyability of these movies has varied greatly from film to film. And when we sat down to watch this latest movie, we wondered if it would be more Jungle Book, which was delightful, or Tomorrowland, which sucked. For me, <laughs> this movie fell somewhere in the middle. Yeah, you know, I, there were so many things that I liked about this movie. I thought the acting was really good, especially by the, the trio of actors who played the three young heroes at the center of the movie. Right. Storm Reed, Levi Miller, and Derek McCabe. Storm Reed especially, she's the emotional center of the story, and she just does a really good job um, carrying off that role. She's somebody, I think, to watch for. I think she's got a long career in front of her. Right. Um, and, you know, it's that's so good because child actors, they can be so hit or miss. Right. I thought these three were definitely a hit. Yeah. And the on-screen rapport between the three is really on point, very strong. Um, and the adult actors, um, they also turn strong performances. And, you know, what would you expect from people like Reese Witherspoon, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Mindy Kaling, Chris Pine... Zach Galifianakis, and Michael Pena. Yes, but for me, the standout was um, Gugu Mbatha-Ra as the mom, Dr. Kate Murray. Yes. She just brought a lot of heart and depth to that role. Um, and she just, you know, she plays this brilliant, strong, compassionate mom, and she just did a really good job. I, there's a scene towards the end, especially, where I just thought, wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So, I know you haven't read this book no. series, but I have. And there are a lot of changes between the book and the movie. The location is different, and there are quite a few characters that are um, <laughs> taken out. And, and there are some themes that are definitely not hit as hard or softened. But the core themes, I think, of the movie are true to the core themes of the book. They're still there. These are themes that are universal, and they're delivered in a way that is accessible to the young target audience that I think they were going for. Hmm. Now, watching this movie, I thought the pacing was pretty steady. Uh, the story never drags, but at times I felt like in order to keep up the pace, they didn't go into some parts of the story as deeply as I think they could have. Um, but it's definitely not a boring movie. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like you're right that the movie lacks some intensity and some depth that could have had more of that. Um, I never was sitting there like really concerned for the characters and never felt like there was any real danger. Right. It was seemed kind of tepid danger, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's unfortunate because it's not, doesn't feel that way at all in the book. Right. And in fact, um, one of the changes between the book and the movie that I thought was a real misstep was the way that they showed the it. That's the evil entity that the characters are fighting. Right. Um, they change significantly what the it looks like between oh. the book and the movie. And the, in the book, it's much creepier. And hmm. um, there's also things that are um, at the heart of the goals of the it, um, being very controlling and trying to take away people's choice and trying to make yeah. everything the same. They that didn't they, yeah. dive into that very well. It right. Was, they was, touch on it in the right. movie, but it's not... Really amorphous, just kind of really... Just yeah. kind of it's they don't really thing. explore that part of the theme. And yeah. so that I felt like that was unfortunate. I think that they that really could have helped up the, the creepiness factor and the sense of of danger or you know, the conflict of the whole story if yeah. they had um if they I think they could have handled that that part of it a little better. Now, well, maybe another down point for me, uh not maybe, it was. The special effects and CGI in some respects were really lacking. Uh, really underwhelming. Some of it was well done, 
But there are times when you really felt you were looking at an actor in front of a green screen, and you could just tell. Yeah. And there was one CJ character in particular that looked so unreal that it was distracting. And I had the same issue with all the CJ and Beauty and the Beast, frankly, last year. Step up your game, Disney! Right. It's like, put some more budget into <laughs> your know. CGI. You can do so much better. Yes. Um, the, the other thing that I really bothered me about the movie was the music. Very I just distracting. Yeah, I just thought the music was so distracting. You know, when music is used in the right way in a movie, it just it adds, it enhances the story, it enhances oh. character development, yes. you know. And and this I felt like just totally detracted from what was going on instead of adding to him. So that that was annoying. Yeah, the other annoying thing for me, aside from the music and CJ, was the close ups. Good grief. The reaction shots are just like full face. Oof, you could have played a terrible drinking game to that. It would have been <laughs> awful. You need to cut those back. Dial it down a little bit on those. You didn't need to see everybody's face. You just felt like they like overused the really big close ups. Like yes. the really ultra close ups. It's just, you know, a handful here and there is fine, but. To show everybody's reaction every time something happens, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I know there were some, other, <laughs> some other times in the movie where you felt like the way they set up the shots were, were um, they had missed some opportunities to maybe set them up in a way that would have served the story a little bit better. Sure. I think so. On the whole, though, um, this is not a bad film no. by any measure. It's definitely not as bad as Tomorrowland. The young cast really does a good job of, of holding you in the story. It's very likable. Yeah. And especially, again, especially Storm Reed is make. She was just excellent. And um, and I think that, you know, this is a family film. Mm -hmm. And this movie in particular is aimed at this group probably around 8 to 15 maybe, right? Like this, or yeah. 13 maybe, yeah. even like skewing a little younger. But and then people that are fans of the book, but um, so like our daughter that's twelve that has read the series, she if we took her to see this movie, I think she would love it. Like I she would so. really enjoy it. And so while it's not the best film, and I can definitely see the flaws and the cracks in it, it's something that I could enjoy watching with her as well. Like yeah. it would not be a horrible experience as a parent to go take your child yeah. if they're interested in this and um, to see it in the theater. If you're a real purist. When it comes to book adaptations to film, first of all, I don't know how you enjoy any film that is made from a book, but <laughs> but you're definitely not going to enjoy this right. because there are some significant changes and it probably will really bother you. Okay, but but on the whole, I think it's a good family film. Right. Overall, I'd give this three out of five stars. It's it's worth the watch. Your kids will enjoy it. It's a good family alternative to the. Uh, glut of rated R movies that are out right now. So. Yeah, and if you if you want, if you enjoy taking your kids to the movie theater, this is a good one to take them to, but I don't feel like it's necessary for you to rush out and see this on the big screen. I no. think it plays just as well at home if you want to wait for the yep. DVD release. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have suggestions for a movie you'd like us to review or a picture you'd like to see me draw, let us know in the comments. Thanks.